as us. One addition to today's tech culture is the drone. These readily available eyes in the sky have become a source of controversy as well as a useful tool. Marshall Simon's eighth grade science teacher and BHS gymnastics coach Jordan Marino has joined the increasing number of unmanned aircraft enthusiasts. Well, it's technology and it's brand new and it's evolving. And so in science, everything evolves. Uh, technology, organisms, um, theories, the way we think. And so, you know, where this is the most current thing, I thought, why not? This particular model was designed and engineered to uh, work with GoPro. The software works with the software in GoPro and enables me to, it's, it's, it's a filming, it's a filming drone. When I put my smartphone in the controller, um, it enables a GPS, communicates to the drone, and the drone communicates to the satellites, and on the display it'll tell me how far the drone is from me in terms of the straightest line, and also tell me how high the drone is from the ground. I've always been a fan of GoPro, you know, through fishing and snowmobiling and, you know, kayaking and uh, other types of sports like that, so I thought it'd be fun to have the GoPro um, up in the air filming me do these things. And so on my research, I, I investigated drones that could follow you or uh, do an aerial selfie, so to speak. And this drone kept on coming up in my searches. And upon more research, I found that, um, that this drone would, would fit what I'm looking for, aerial photography. And just kind of seeing, I lived in Burlington my whole life, and seeing it from a different perspective is very interesting. You know, my parents' house or places I like to go or hang out, the recreation apartment, stuff like that. Drones have proven beneficial for law enforcement, infrastructure maintenance and management, and are also credited with saving lives. Drones have also become a source of contention regarding privacy, property damage and injury, and have been outright banned in cities like Chicago and New York, leading the Federal Aviation Administration to require the registration of drones by February 19th of this year. So I just Google search FAA drone registration and um everything came up and it, I just kind of followed the prompts They make it very easy all I needed to input was my email a credit card number you could have used a gift certificate if you're not comfortable using a credit card you could use a you know a MasterCard gift certificate um, and my um, a mailing address drone operators are considered aviators by the FAA with all the responsibilities thereof including keeping their vehicles below 400 feet altitude so the cool thing is um, with the, the more expensive drones will fly higher, and the more expensive drones will tell you the height of them. Um, this one in particular uses satellites, so before I can even take off, I have to connect to several satellites before it's safe for me to take off. With the software update, it will not enable me to fly higher than 400 feet. My intention is just to, you know, not spy on anyone, first of all. Look at Burlington from a different perspective, you know, the town common, the parks, things that are going on at school events where, you know, I have permission to, you know, not fly it over people, but, you know, from a third person's point of view, different perspective. And when you see the pictures, they come out really cool. Uh, you know, if you're involved in something or it, it's a, a place where you go to or your favorite place or your, your home or uh, your favorite park and you see these aerial photos, it's something cool to hang up and show, you know, hey, look at, look at what Jordan uh, took a picture of. From within 400 feet altitude above the Marshall Simons Middle School, I'm B-News reporter Tad Stefanak, back to you in the studio.